the duet form is one of the yeah, the anchors in dance and the dance floor, it's like the arena in which things take place. The first word that comes in mind is definitely uh, role play and equality. Is it my turn to take the lead right now? Is it my turn to respond or to listen more? There's moments when I'm in competition with my partner. There's moments where I'm relying fully on that partnership. Um, there's moments when it's really a struggle. And there's this way how we speak about relationship and suffering and partnership and intrigue and there's so many things we can speak about in partnership. And I chose to look into power and power couples. For me, I would say that common ground is um, about the dynamic and the relationship of the give and take between two people and how they can coexist in one space. How do you, how do you um, assume power over somebody? How do you come across that you're in control of something? Um, maybe you're not in control. All the way through the piece, um, you're sort of uh, calibrating what that relationship is with that partner. The beauty about power couples is that it's a couple and they have an equality, inherent equality in them. So I started to research a lot of famous power couples like uh, Michelle and Barack Obama, for instance, or uh, Simone de Beauvoir and uh, uh, Sartre. If these are equal partners with whatever complexities happening underneath the surface, for them to find common ground, if we have these equal individuals, that also means when I choreograph, I have to choreograph with that in mind. And I noticed that I was very biased in how I choreographed, you know, like that this is what the man is doing, this is what the woman is doing. So that had to all. <laughs> Uh, become a clean slate. Who is the first one to deciding to leave? Who's the first one to deciding to re-enter? Who's lifting who, you know? So that was a really interesting choreographic process to decide, okay, how can I choreograph with that kind of equality also literally in the process? Yeah. So you just can, you, you think that you still do the cauldron, he just dips under. Yeah. Yeah. You need to step into yeah. her oh, space, yeah. so don't bring her yeah. to you. Yeah. Step into her yeah. space so she can kind of go yeah. And there are moments when you can sort of like play in a very subtle way. Who's 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 in power right now? There you go, beautiful. There you go. Yeah. I find myself relating a lot of the time to many different scenarios with different people in my life, um, and times where I've really had to be there for somebody, or they've also really had to be there for me. The way that the work is set up structurally really helps you go through a journey and also offers a lot of room for play. What? <laughs> okay, we need to come out of that in another way. So, so you yourself can play within it. Um, and for me personally, the, the dramaturgy and the emotion supports the journey because it's a tough piece. You, you are forced to go into different windows that you normally wouldn't go into. I think the beauty is in to be respectful for what it is and what it was, but also respect the way my, my body would do it or my artistry would do it. I created Common Ground in 2018 in Australia for two of, I would say, most outstanding dancers in Australia. Tara Jet Samaya and Richard Chili was the other dancer. Both of them have in them this ability to be, 
yeah, very uh, changing what they what they look like, what we see in them. And when you put that, those together, they either reinforce the masculinity in each other or the femininity in each other, or they balance it out. So I saw there was lots of options how you could uh, uh, talk about togetherness or partnership or relationships. I mean, it's interesting because this is an existing piece of work that we're diving into. Um, and of course, in the beginning, it becomes m much more about like the technicalities of things and really trying to embody the physicality. But more and more now, it's becoming much more about um, the intention um, behind each particular um, section. Uh, uh, intention is everything for me. Movement is great, but what's behind the movement is what it's really about. Yeah, I talk to you, you can get more frantic. It's like, you need, really need to go look. It's like, this. you need to get that energy out. Sorry, Sweden can't really do this. But I think my job is to inspire them through the origin of the process so that they have their own process. It's a moment of, I'm on top, 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 I'm on top. No, 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 it's like this kind of place where you're like, I'm gonna hold it together, I'm gonna hold it together, I'm gonna hold it together, hold it together, hold it together, hold it together. and you go further, 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 you go beyond what you normally allow yourself to do, you yeah. know, when we when we just cook beyond, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then afterwards you go like, why did I make such a fuss about this, you know? You need to get to that place, so that afterwards, this is almost like it washes the emotions away. In the studio, when I see people grow or change or connect, connect the dots or take ownership of, of the material that they're doing is, I find mesmerizing to see. I have an enormous respect for dancers because it's such a vulnerable art form. And you have to be both so intellectually smart and connected to your instinct and completely abandon and control. Like skill sets that most people never experience having to tap into simultaneously. So dancers have a way to communicate about the potential of human beings like no one else. Societies are polarizing. There is there's a lot of that stuff happening. And the beauty, I think, in art is that art is always responding to society and societal shifts. And that also happens in dance. 